As if 2018 wasn't enough of a kick in the seat, 2019 just went right around, did a 180 orbit, and decided to kick all of us wrestling fans square in the crotch. Square in the crotch. It's bad enough you find out today that Super Dave Osborne passed away at the age of 76 for crying out loud. Now, we lose one of the true legends and, yes, icons of professional wrestling, Mean Gene Okerlund, passing away at the age of 76. Now, it is very often cliche, unfortunately, when somebody passes away to just automatically talk about all the great things that they were, da da da, overlook maybe some of the bad things, and you talk about how there will never, never, never be anybody quite like them ever again. The thing is, though, when you're talking about Mean Gene Okerlund, there really isn't any bad to talk about. He was called Mean Gene. I started way, way back by Jesse Ventura. But by all accounts, he was one of the nicest guys you would ever meet. Especially if he bought him some booze. Because he, God knows, loved his booze. Even after a couple of kidney transplants, he still loved his drinks, that's for sure. But he was a nice guy, a gentleman. He was so many good things. You think about the WWF and then later on WCW, before that, AWA. So many big moments, so many big interviews. So many bigger, larger in life characters. And Mean Gene was there for all of it. For all of it. And then when you talk about guys that are one of a kind, like look, you'll have wrestlers every once in a while that could be truly one of a kind. But there is no mistaking it. There is no debating it. Mean Gene is truly, truly, truly one of a kind. And even some of the other good personalities and interview guys over the course of the years don't hold a candle up to Mean Gene Okerlund. And nobody coming down the pipe in the future most certainly is going to measure up to him in any way, shape, or form. Like, this sucks. Yet another guy from my past, another guy from my childhood that is gone. This absolutely sucks. When I think about the WWF of old, and even when I think back to some of the glory days of WCW, one of those people that inevitably always seems to pop up is freaking mean Gene Okerlund. So many things, all the local promos he used to do with the different guys, some of the classic things he did back and forth with the Iron Sheik, not to mention the back and forth he used to have with the macho man Randy Savage. Your mustache is crooked. Well, your beard's a little sideways too, pal. <laughs> like that was Mean Gene. He could hold his own. He was quick on his feet. But he did a phenomenal job of always setting these guys up. It always felt like when a guy was being interviewed by me and Gene Okerlund, he came out better for it afterwards. Whereas so often now they just throw somebody out there, there's no personality, they just ask a bland, generic question, and the guy gives a bland, generic response. Like there was an actual human level of interaction with me and Gene when he was conducting an interview that is truly unmatched, second to none. You just think about all the things that have happened throughout wrestling over the years and how Mean Gene always seemed to find himself kind of in the midst of it. You know, I think back, I saw the reminder today, somebody posted it online, talking about when Earthquake hurt Hulk Hogan in 1990, I believe it was. And here's Mean Gene selling the shit out of it. Because he's talking about how much he loves Hogan and how close he is to him and how much of a friend he was. And people knew this for years before that. And the way he was able to sell that to the point where he's like, I can't, I can't, I can't. Please write 
holster your letters so that way we can sit there and send you crap and everything else. But that was Mean Gene, man. He pulled it off in a way that nobody else could. I think about things like that. And for you guys talking about WCW, when it comes to infamous and legendary promos and interviews, Booker T tops the list. Well, who the hell was there? Mean Gene Okerlund. So many big shows over the years, especially in WWF. And one of the constants that really helped make a show feel like a big show and matches feel like big matches is when you got backstage to the interviews and there is Mean Gene Okerlund. And I always have felt like in professional wrestling, sometimes it's the little things that matter the most. And you could say what Mean Gene did in the grand scheme of things was a little thing, but by God, it mattered so much. It was significant, it was important. It helped show these characters in a new light. He helped bring more out of them. He did so many wonderful things. But when I think of little things, I look at the formation of the NWO at Bash of the Beach 96. I look at Hulk Hogan aligning himself with the Outsiders Hall and Nash. And you could talk about it. it's Hogan, he's turning going against everything he's been about the past 15 years. That's all fine and good. But one of those small details, I don't even know that it's intended, it just worked out that way. One of those small details to me that really put it over the edge, in my mind anyways, is that after Hogan drops the leg on Macho Man Randy Savage, who's there in the ring to interview him but mean Gene Okerlund? Like you just go throughout the history of the wrestling business. The debut of the Gobbledygooker at Survivor Series 1990. Who's the one sitting there telling the Gobbledygooker that he's got a set of legs like his mother-in-law? Mean Gene Okerlund. Like time after time after time. You could just go through YouTube and find classic after classic. Him and the Iron Sheet doing freaking Toyota commercials. Oh, my God. Mean Gene hocking the 900 hotline. Good Christ, I can't imagine what the rate is up in heaven. Whew. But, again, man, it's like, it's one of those tough things as wrestling fans. We get so used to guys dying. And now, granted, Gene lived to be in his mid-70s and had a couple of kidney transplants and all of this. So, yeah, I mean, he lived a full life. But it doesn't mean it doesn't suck any less. Because to me, again, as an older wrestling fan, it, it's just another piece of my childhood dying off. And as I approach 40 here in a couple of years, I feel myself kind of like in a midlife crisis moment. I think about my childhood, and I think about these things. And these people that used to give me those good feelings, those people that used to bring me joy, those people that used to make me smile, they used to make me laugh, and as a kid sometimes make me cry, more and more, they're no longer here. But by God, man, when I think about wrestling, and I've talked about it with some of the other guys over the years that have passed that make me smile, that make me laugh, I just randomly over the years would just go back and watch random interview segments involving mean Gene Okerlund. He had a little bit of presence about him, the way he set himself up, the way he helped guys get over, he put them over. He still managed to find a way to put himself over too, but not to the detriment of what really mattered, which was the wrestler, which is definitely a lost art today. Again, we talk about goats. Mean Gene was clearly the goat of what he did, and I don't think anybody with a rational wrestling mind is going to dispute that. When we talk about guys being irreplaceable, Mean Gene is truly irreplaceable. To this day, the WWF has not been able to replace him. The WWE has not been able to replace him. It doesn't work. It's just not the same. That dynamic doesn't work because there's no Mean Gene to make that dynamic work. I hope right now that Mean Gene's up there at the pearly gates Hocking the 900 hype mind to Saint whoever the hell. Oh, could you imagine? And I hope one more time him and Macho Man 
for having another round of blows on the microphone. Oh, could you imagine? It's like, Macho Man's like, you're dead, Mean Gene. And Mean Gene's like, well, you're not exactly alive yourself, pal. <laughs> He was so smooth, he could make you laugh. It was freaking awesome, man. And for the younger generations that didn't get to experience Mean Gene, you might think I'm pumping him full of smoke because he's passed away. You might think I've just got some nostalgic feelings and as a result, I elevate him way too highly. I promise you, that is not the case, period. The guy is a legend. The guy is an icon. He had mainstream crossover appeal. He absolutely did. He just When I think about the glory days of WWF, the glory days of professional wrestling in my lifetime, Mean Gene was associated with so many of those moments. It's a big piece of wrestling that is gone, a big piece of my childhood that is now gone too. That sucks. That really sucks. A mean Gene. That's right. You keep telling Macho Man your beard's a little sideways. <laughs> You're gone, but I promise you, you will never be forgotten. Oh, yeah. You were the cream of the crop. You were. Everybody else just wishes they could even have one small cup of coffee at the big time level like you had for all of those years.